10 or 10, 10, 11 rank. And you drive all the way to Thiruvananthapuram and you know, tennis is not something that is common and commonly played in India. We do Our best uh, doubles match. Hello guys, I hope all of you are fine. Welcome to Chirag Talk Show. In very episode number one, I had a chat with one of the most influential person in the country, Mr. Imran Mirza, who is father as well as coach of Sanya Mirza. I discussed all the possibilities regarding how other sports can be made popular in the country. Apart from that, I discussed is there any new superstar who can actually replace Sanya Mirza. So kindly watch the video till the very end. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Kindly support us. Thank you very, very much. Uh, hello guys, uh, welcome to Chirag Talk Show. My first guest of this uh, today is a great gentleman, a family person and a super father too. Two of the most talented uh, female stars in India. Uh, one is an in entrepreneur, a YouTuber, and uh, she's running her own business in Hyderabad. And the second one is uh, sen actually Sensation, who has actually inspired all the young girls in, in India to pick up tennis records, to pick up a sport outside cricket, and again, uh, inspired so many young girls, not only in India, but in other parts of Southeast Asia as well. Uh, firstly, uh, sir, I would like to congratulate you for Anam's daughter and Sanya's 2022 year. Uh, behind every successful woman is a, a family and a strong dad that lends a, a shoulder and a loving mother's unconditional support and love. Our parents are actually usually our unsung heroes in our stories. Uh, so, sir, uh, firstly, welcome to our show. Uh, how how do you feel uh, to be Nana again? <laughs> uh, well, it's great to be a Nana again and also a great pleasure to be here on your show, Chirag. Thank and you. I hope uh, all my experiences will be of some help to some of your listeners. Yes, 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 sir, definitely. Uh, sir, can you uh, recall one of the unsung sacrifice which according to you was necessary to where Sane and Anam are right now? Uh, let me tell you, Chirag, that, you know, we've never ever thought of anything as a sacrifice. When you have a kind of passion that we have, the entire family has for a sport or for anything in particular, uh, everything you do is for the passion and for the love of everything. So I have, we have actually never ever thought that there was any sacrifice involved. It was something that we were all following a passion. We were all following a dream. We were all enjoying the process. We were enjoying the, the hard work that was going in, the successes, the failures, everything. So in that sense, I, I have never, ever thought of it. And I don't think anyone uh, from my family has ever thought that there was any sacrifice. Involved. It was all for, for, uh, for achieving something that probably no Indian had ever achieved. Yeah, so that is actually very inspiring to us. I clearly uh, thought if, if I'll be father, I would be like, I, I have a clear inspiration in you only. Uh, the way you have actually inspired all of the, you know, young generations, not only uh, sir, female, but males also uh, like us. And again, uh, your daughters have actually been a literary role models for everyone. So, sir, Thank my, you very much. Uh, sir my second question to you is what, according to you, uh, was your actually role model when you were growing up and how did uh, he inspire or he or she inspire you in uh, supporting and loving father you are today? Well, Chirag, firstly, I think it was my parents, no doubt about it. You know, I had uh, amazing parents and uh, I was very fortunate to inculcate a lot of values from them, a lot of love from them. But uh, I was also unfortunate that I lost them very early in my life. I was, uh, I think, 17 when my mother died and 19 when my father died. But in that time, I think they had given me enough inspiration and enough knowledge to be able to handle everything else that, that happened. I remember when my mother died, it was my father who was my inspiration for me because to, to handle the adversity and the, and the problems that went with it. But when my father died two years later, it was all on my own. It was what, uh, what learning I had over the last 19 years from my parents. So definitely they were role models. They are today too for me. Whatever I have learned from them, I try to inculcate in my children and my family. Uh, they were my first inspiration and probably the last as well. But there was, there was a few others as well. That, that after my, my parents died, I spent a lot of time with, with my uncle, Mr. Ghulam Ahmad, who was a former Indian cricket captain, a great offspin of his time. And uh, I learned a lot from him. You know, we had a great relationship and he was definitely a role model. I think I still use a lot of advice I have got from him, uh, use some of the situations that we had together and the way we handled those together. And uh, he probably was my second inspiration. And uh, among sportsmen, of course, he was also a sportsman, but I think there was someone I admired a lot while growing up. And that was Mansur Ali Khan, Nawab of Putaudi, the Indian cricket captain, and while I was growing up. And the reason for that was, of course, he had a great personality. He, had, he was, uh, he was uh, you know, the kind of person everyone wanted to be. 
a role model for a lot of people. But what I admired about him was his overcoming the adversity he did while having lost an eye, he still competed at the highest level in a sport that is so competitive. And I think for me, that was something that was, that was absolutely amazing. I cannot think of any other person who can handle that kind of an adversity in the manner he did without ever letting anybody know that he was having such a major problem. Absolutely, sir. Uh, our parents are our actually role models. Uh, like, like we have, we are in actually generation. Like, uh, whatever small things happen to us, we always discuss with our parents. But uh, the vice versa is not true, uh, because the parents can actually uh, contain all the important things. Uh, that, that actually I learned from my father. He never discussed any pro professional life of his with me. But I used to discuss everything with him, <laughs> just because I, I wasn't. Uh, as calm as as he can be and so i think uh, so are you as, as per the experience that you have shared thank you very very much for that experience sir so i would just like to know because i believe i yeah i believe that Chirag, that i owe my success and the success of my family to to, to what my, my parents were to me Absolutely. you know the, the beautiful bond that i have with them i feel that the, it was their prayers and their blessings that have brought us to the position we are in today Right, right, sir. Definitely. Our parents are always going to be our role models. Uh, so my third question to you is that in India, like uh, we all are very much obsessed with results, but nobody understands the process behind those results that there is a lot of effort that you have actually uh, taken, up, uh, you know, uh, for Tanya to be uh, where she is for Anam uh, right now as well, uh, that uh, what kind of hardships that you have actually faced uh, to make a career out of that uh, for Sanya? With, with tennis especially, it's not a popular sport in India. Yes, obviously, you know, tennis is not something that is common and commonly played in India. We don't have too many role models in tennis. There have been very few and far between. Right. So, and there is a lot of effort required in this particular game. Of course, it, you have it, there's a lot of effort required to play internationally in any, any sport. But, uh, but as far as tennis is concerned, you know there are more than 200 countries playing the sport seriously, and the next champion can come out of any of those 200 countries. So it's as competitive as that. Uh, the reason why there the prize money is high is because the stakes are high. That many more people want to play the game. That many more people want to watch the game. That many people want to advertise on TV channels when when the game is being shown. It's that popular, you know. So it's a truly global sport, and I think to make it big in this sport is all the more difficult. Of course, I'm not saying that it's easy in any other sport, but uh, in a global sport, it becomes all the more tougher. And the, you know, I, we had decided very early in life we would have to do whatever it takes. We didn't know what it was going to take. And uh, probably it was some of the memories that uh, that uh, come to mind. I think this was something that you wanted to know as well. You know, uh, driving away when she started, Sanya started playing uh, tennis uh, nationally in a, in a jalopy of a car, a secondhand car, where we thought that was the easiest mode of transport and probably the cheapest because uh, trains at short notice was never, never a possibility. And flights were too expensive for us. And we thought that having an old car, in a, with a diesel, which was dieselized, but probably the easiest form of transport and most economical because uh, uh, leave the the hotel room the day she lost rather than wait, wait on until we got uh, bookings on on train or, or or on a flight. So I I have driven the entire length and breadth of the country. I've been to Tiruvannathapuram, to Mumbai, to Pune, to Ahmedabad, to Bhopal, to Chennai, to Bangalore, and very many many small small towns along the way. And it was a wonderful experience. When I look back now, of course it was tough then, but when I look back now, I think that's the kind of that's given us a kind of bonding in the family that remains, you know, uh, living in small, small little hotel rooms together with uh, Anam was probably two or three at that point of time. Right. And uh, Sanya, about 10, 10, 10, 11, trying. And you drive all the way to Tiruvannathapuram and find that uh, Sanya has an off day and loses on the first day itself. So those are the kind of things that can hurt you if you're not uh, that genuinely keen about the game. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as parents are concerned at the academy, one thing that I've always said, you know, within six months of starting, the, starting out in the game, they come up to me and ask me that, uh, how long will it be before our, our child has a chance to play at Junior Wimbledon or something like that. And my standard answer is that uh, you probably have to play for about 10 years before you can even decide whether they have a chance to become a professional tennis player or not. So uh, that's the kind of hard work it requires. So it's a very long-term goal and you have to enjoy the process. You have to enjoy the hardships. You have to enjoy the, the struggles. You have to enjoy the wins. It was, when we started out, it was never about uh, winning Wimbledon. It was about winning the under-8 or under-10 state ranking tournament. 
or even reaching the final of that. That that gave us a lot of pride, and 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 uh, we felt really thrilled with those kind of things. So that's the other thing that I keep telling parents that you know if you're going to put the kind of pressure on a child to immediately start thinking of Wimbledon even when they've just about started the game, that's way too much for them to handle. You know, you have to enjoy the process. You have to enjoy the small victories and on the way. You have to enjoy the struggles. You have to enjoy the losses and make them learn from that. And you yourself learn from that. And that's how our life has gone about. Uh, as we say, that sports uh, make, uh, makes you understand how to lose, but it never makes you a loser. So Absolutely. yes, uh, uh, yeah, th these are the experiences. So, what is the best match that you remember Sanya played uh, in uh, in singles that she lost? Actually, she played the best, but she lost. And how did you recover her from that? I loss? think. Uh, I think. I think this was in Bangkok. I if I'm not mistaken, uh, this was uh, just a. I think 2008, she had uh, just lost uh, the mixed doubles final in Australian Open and we were here in Bangkok. And okay. I think she was playing uh, Zona Reva, where Zona Reva was a, was a top ranked player at that point in, of time. In 2008. And uh, she played a three setter there. She played a three setter there. Actually, uh, she was struggling with the, with her the, with her backhand. Where Zona Reva had a terrific backhand. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. she would. Uh, she, uh, she would take her well out of court and Sanya was struggling and she was unable to use the whipped uh, forehand that she's, yeah. she has. And I went in and I remember talking to her and we devised a strategy right there on court where I said, you know, uh, playing uh, down the line on the heavy cross court backhand that she was, that Zonare was playing was not an option because it was just flying out. So what we did was that we took away the angles from Zonareva. Absolutely, and started playing the ball in the middle of the court, so that once she said, uh, once the once the ball went in the center of the court rather than on the sidelines, which she was anyway struggling to to get, uh, that's when she did not have Zonareva did not have the angles to play with, and then uh, when she played onto Sanya's backhand, she had the option of running around the backhand and using her forehand to it, and that's how we changed the game. We won the second set from an almost hopeless position after having lost the first, and then we lost in the third. And that to me, that was that was a brilliant match that she played. She changed the strategy along the way. And I thought that was a brilliant match against a top level player, which she lost. Yeah. And sir, what about her best uh, doubles match apart from Wimbledon 2015 final? <laughs> no, that, that, uh, that is way too above everything else, I think. That, that yeah. the final that the Wimbledon that remains in my that remains etched in my uh, memories forever. I, I also uh, apart from remember. that, of course, there would be a lot of <laughs> I clearly remember that were, match. There, were, uh, there was a forehand winner, 5 3. Deuce, I clearly remember, in the middle of both uh, Makarova and Visnina. Uh, and it was the best forehand winner that match at that particular point of view. Well, and you have actually taught Sanya just go to go for her shots and take the ball as early as she can. So uh, that yeah. was one, one of the wonderful matches, but I want the other match. Uh, yeah, and the memory that stays with me over there is, you know, we were always fighting from from behind. Like from we behind, had, yeah. uh, you know, we had lost the first. Yeah, day. and uh, it looked like we might never be able to catch up with them. They were down again, two five in the in the third set. In the third set, yeah. And, uh, and, uh, and, 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 and then, then they fought back with to come back to five one. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, and then it was five all, and that's when the game stopped because of bad light, and then the, the roof was put on, and that's when I got an opportunity to go in. And you know, the, the coaches are allowed to go in and talk yeah. to the players at that time, and I went in, and they were both terribly excited. And my only job then was that to just calm them down and to and to explain to them exactly. You know, yeah, there, there's no way that anybody can guarantee a victory for you. But you, for, as far as I'm concerned, I said you've already won for me. The kind of final that you've played, this is absolutely amazing. Yeah. Uh, we, we may still lose the match, but, we have, but the, what we need to do is to play to our strengths. So I told Sanya that if you find a forehand, you have to just go for it. You miss right. it, you miss it, but you have to go for it. And I told Martina that uh, you see something at the net, don't leave it for Sanya. If you think you can finish it, go for it. You know, If we lose, we lose. That's the way. The, 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 but we have the best chance of winning if we play to our strengths. And we, they yeah. went in with the lights and it was like a total, absolute, you know, uh, the circus yeah. literally with all the lights and everything. Yeah, yeah. It was and, like, and then they finished yeah. terrific style, absolutely. It was for Han Akhtar, if I know, if I'm not wrong. He, uh, he was also supporting with you in your box, mm -hmm. I guess. Yes, uh, there was really, Farhan and his, his father as well, Javed Akhtar. Yeah, Javed Akhtar well. also. 
Yes, sir. Uh, sir, coming towards uh, the promoting sports with education, since I am from education field, uh, do you think the sport uh, should be made uh, as a compulsory subject in all the uh, standards the students study? Because, like, parents. I am not like, a great believer in that, Chirag. Uh, yeah, I, I don't. I don't think there's a need to make it compulsory. Uh, I think uh, what is more important is that people who want to play a sport must be given adequate facilities and and uh, must have a, uh, the, there must be an enough infrastructure, perfect infrastructure for them to be able to compete uh, at the highest level if they feel they have the potential. And that's where I think we are a bit lacking. We we do not have, especially in a game like tennis, especially when Sanya started out, there was absolutely no infrastructure. Nobody understood what it took to get to the top. And we had to learn along the way. We were fortunate there was internet and we were fortunate we took some right decisions along the way. They could have been wrong decisions, but we took some calculated guesses and they worked out. They may not have worked out too, but we were fortunate in that sense. And uh, I think that's more important. Like uh, when Sanya started out, she, was, she started on, on, on uh, cow dung courts. You know, yeah. there were hardly about two or three hard courts in, in Hyderabad. And we had to spend hours waiting for someone to, who had it in their house to allow us to play on that. So that's something that we've tried to change in our, in our small way by setting up our, uh, our international level tennis academy in Hyderabad, which, you know, has all the facilities that we never had. We have uh, like 12 courts out there, nine hard courts of absolute right. international standard, three play courts, a gym and a housing facility and, and everything else that you can expect. In so these are the kind of not just in tennis, but in all sports, I think this is what we need rather than making it complete. If, if someone doesn't want to play, play a sport, that's up to him. Of course, he can exercise if he wants, so that's good for his right. health and all those things. But, uh, but for those who are genuinely interested in sport, I think we need, need to provide an infrastructure and a platform for them. That's more important. So how, uh, sir, I hope you have uh, you have watched last uh, night's match. That was uh, a crazy match between India and Pakistan. Uh, we had, I just was counting the number of people who were watching that match on Hotstar. It was like 16 lakh plus people. Uh, yeah. And uh, when I see any Indian tennis tournament like ATP, Pune, and there will be one tournament in the next week, in the next to next week in, in Chennai as well. I don't think so many people will watch it. So how, how can we make this tennis popular? Uh, you know, tennis has a popular sport in, in India where this is a so much uh, a, a buzz about cricket being a religion in India. Uh, yeah, I asked that how can we make tennis as a popular sport in India, especially even if uh, with, with Hotstar going to telecast, maybe Chennai Open or maybe they are going to uh, telecast ATP Pune as well. But I don't see any many of the people seeing that particular sport. So how can we make it popular? Yeah, Chirag, I think you know from my experience, I'll tell you that the only way a sport can become popular is if uh, there is if in India at least is if Indians are doing well at it. There was a time when Sanya was really making waves yeah. across the world with her with a singles tennis at that point yeah. of time, even in doubles in 2015. And yeah. that's when a lot of people got into the sport. I remember there was there was crazy mania when she was playing in Hyderabad. There were yeah. the stands filled up about three or four hours before the match even started. And you know, I remember uh, 2005 the, 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 the blackguard putting putting up a blackguard which says Sanya, you brought us into tennis from cricket. Uh, yeah. So that was the kind of impact she had. And it's unfortunate that as a country we did not use that kind of momentum to create yeah. more, more more facilities and more more champions. And that's something that has hurt us in the long run. I think uh, today it's been almost two decades now since Sanya made it big uh, internationally. Yeah. And uh, she's almost ready to retire now. And still we haven't found someone who can take her place. Yeah, We can only keep trying. But we have to work towards an Indian making it to the highest level. That's when the inter the public interest comes in. You know? <laughs> and uh, we can only keep trying like what we are doing it now. Mahesh Bhupati does his thing. Well, Leander Pace is doing his thing. We've set up an academy for right. uh, in the name of Sanya Mirza. And these are things we can do. But as a, as probably as a society, we need to do something really big where we can produce. And it's very unfortunate, like I said, that we were unable to use the momentum to create more stars after Sanya's uh, great. Yeah, yeah sir, that, that to me is also a very fine situation because we had Ankita Raina who was doing pretty okay because with, with the double ranking she had, she won that uh, WTA tournament in Australia last year. 
uh, when when Sanya and Ankita went into Olympics, I we clearly had a shot at least with 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 the with the game they can match with each other. But unfortunately, uh, only Sanya just uh, continued her success after motherhood. She was uh, 21 uh, last week uh, only, and she is just carrying the Indian flag flying. Unfortunately, even the players who can uh, you know are they are not unable they are unable to match her standards again that's also a very fine situation yeah that's the thing you know even after all these years i have to say that we don't have the ideal platform or the ideal uh, the, uh, infrastructure to be able to produce champions on a regular basis whoever has come out whether it's a leander pace or whether it's a mahesh bhupati or sanya mirza or rohan bopanna they've done it on their own steam you know they have uh, family support and they've given it all they have and they've had a very special talent as well each one had very special talent and and you don't find that in in uh, you know on a regular basis uh, but if you have a system there are people who can be lesser talented and yes make yet make it and here we had to fight uh, an al almost non-existent system and that made it tougher and we've marginally improved now but we still remain you know uh, we are not in the class of other countries where they have so much facilities countries like spain uh, they are conducting those itf tournaments and we are unable to conduct 88 aita tournaments uh, accordingly they are conducting itf tournaments every week and uh, now and then and they have stars uh, in i think top uh, 50 there are seven or eight people who are in top 50 right now uh, in in spain yeah, but, but it's not only it's not only about uh, organizing tournaments there are so many other aspects that go i've always said that one uh, being talented of course a prerequisite you know without being talented there's no way anybody can come up but mm -hmm. after being talented there are still about i think there are 75% other things that need to fall into right place and that's where the support staff comes in and that's where knowledge of the, doing the right things comes in and that's something that uh, we do not have like uh, how important point is we can talk about the system but system is not going to uh, you know it, it is a tough system in india we all know about that uh, but uh, how apart from talent apart from the trainings that we do what kind of special trainings that we can actually do so that we can actually match these players in Spain? They are ranked less, but they are beating our players uh, uh, on the consistent basis. Yeah, I can tell you this one thing that, you know, when I think this was way back in 1999, when Sanya had a reasonable ranking in, amongst the juniors. Yes. And we went to US, not only to say, we, we wanted to test her talent, you know, with the, with the Americans out there. And because of her ranking over here in India and Asia, she was ranked number one in all the four or five tournaments that she played in the U.S. And uh, in all the tournaments, despite being the top seed, she never won a match. Oh so God. that's the kind of difference. That is. The ranking plays no role in that. You know, the level is, is, is altogether different in, in, in U.S. and Europe and Australia and other countries compared to India. And I remember asking Sanya at that point of time, do you think you'll ever be able to match these kind of players? That this was in 99 and, or 2000, I think. And, and I remember she was just about a 13-year-old and she said, yeah, I can, but it'll take me six months. Oh so, God. you know, that, for me, that was, that was inspiring for a 13-year-old to be saying that. Also, I, I felt fortunate that I was able to afford to take her to US at the age of 13, where she was still developing. So she could, you know, test herself and then try to improve to the level that she saw that uh, that was being played out there in, mm -hmm. in the United States. And uh, sure enough, you know, just six months later, she she qualified for the junior Wimbledon. So yeah. that was the kind of, uh, you know, confidence also that that showed in the in the child of 13 that Sanya was at that point of time. And uh, I, I, that was that, that was learning curve as far as I'm concerned as well. So rankings really don't make a difference. Right. But like I said, there are a lot of aspects that go into making a tennis player. It's not only about talent. It's not only like that a coach may be good for a particular player, not necessarily that he's good for. I may be good for Sanya. It's not necessarily I can be good for everyone else in the world. Right. Because there has to be a rapport between the coach and the, the player. And that's extremely important. Right. And this can happen even at the highest level. Someone who has trained in a Sharapova, not necessarily he can train someone in India to be the same same player because there are different things, different ways. One of the things that I have learned over the years, this is something that I've tried to share with a lot, not be, many people have understood, uh, Chirag, is that, you know, the kind of technique that is taught in Europe for tennis is not necessarily, it may be, uh, it may be perfect technique for the European physique. It's not necessarily the right technique for, for an Indian physique. And that's where I have been able to, you know, it means there are some uh, different training methods that we uh, we also must adopt apart from yeah. uh, apart from the basic things that we are doing uh, 
uh right. and obviously we require talented people as well so we discussed with you in 2022 how sanya actually played pretty good so uh, it's a very inspiring thing for a mother of a 3 year old child who's playing that well and who's competing that well you know he, she had a, a very uh, uh, there is a serious injury that she is actually going with her elbow yeah. and she yeah. beat garcia uh, who won the I tournament uh, who won I the know. tournament actually <laughs> in cincinnati Absolutely. So it means it means her mental strength is pretty very good uh, because this is the strength that Indians uh, normally other Indian girls are trying tough to deal with because they are match points up with certain opponents but unfortunately not coming to them. But with Sanya, she is just taking it to another level with with the fitness that she is having. So what is the difference? I agree, but uh, apart from the fitness and everything else, she is someone who, once she starts uh, believing she can achieve something, she'll give everything to that. That is something right. that I've seen in her. And once she's convinced that I have to achieve something, she will go all out, hundred and ten percent. That's one yeah. thing she has. Secondly, she is fearless, and that I think we have we have played a role in that. In some, uh, even when she was a kid, I remember we have never ever. You know, you know, a child is always yeah. bothered about what the parents think. They don't care what the world thinks, yeah. and that's a very important stage where you try and imbibe the value of giving your best shot rather than winning. Right. And that's something that a lot of parents will struggle with because they're always looking for for success. They're always looking for victories. Otherwise, they want to give up the game. In our case, it was only about her enjoying the sport and giving her best shot. Now, I think the only time I've been a little bit stern with her when she was a little kid was when I thought she had not given her best shot. Uh, apart from that, you know, we, we always applauded every effort. We knew how much effort she was putting in, and we we always so that fear of losing is never there in her, even today. Yeah, yeah. There, there was there was there was a there was a player, a women's player. I remember a long time back who an India of Indian origin, and I and I remember her putting a lot of pressure on herself and losing matches she should have won. And I asked her, why are you doing this kind of thing? Why are you putting so much pressure? And she said. You know, when I was a kid, it was my parents used to uh, put pressure when I lost matches, and today they don't do that, but I do that to myself. Right. So these are things that stay with you, and these are important things that nobody else can change except the parents. And and that's something I think we I take pride in that I have given Sanya the fearlessness right, right. from an age when at a time which when she was still developing that, and uh, that's something that you know I struggle to even explain to the parents at the academy. That uh, you know, the winning and losing are part of the game. You have to take it in your stride. You have to use it to to learn for for your future, and you have to you know, if you and not everyone is guaranteed a professional career, but uh, you know, whatever it takes, uh, you try and reach the highest level that you are capable of, and that's what you should be trying to do rather than becoming just a professional. Right, right sir. The fear of losing it should not be there. Fearless attitude must be there to even accomplish. I think one of the things I remember Sanya telling me the other day. You know, uh, yeah. she says. Uh, uh, I, of course, we are un, uh, under pressure on big points. I feel yeah. the pressure, but yeah. at the same time, I feel that the other one, the opponent, is feeling more pressure than me, and I enjoy that pressure. She says. Yeah, so right. that's something you need to uh, enjoy the pressure. You have to understand that uh, uh, the other person is also feeling the same pressure, and you have to try and come out the winner. And that's a challenge that that uh, that can somehow somehow get the best out of you if you're a champion. Material. She has two uh, wins over world number one doubles players uh, in this year, and the yeah. attitude, the fearless attitude she showed against uh, Sinia Kova and uh, Krejcikova. I think five all in the uh, first tie break, and she came up with right. two blinders. Yes. First down Absolutely. the line winner, and then one uh, one uh, ace uh, out wide. Yes. So again, right. the fearless attitude it, it it is always inspiring, sir. Because even if right. uh, you are bat battling against odd all odds, you still are coming up with some blinded winners like that. Yeah, you know, you know, Chirag. But that's the thing I struggled with in her early early years when she played in India. I remember a lot of uh, media persons coming up to me and saying, "Why is she so angry with herself? And why is yeah. she behaving like that? Why can't she be cool?" But you know. That was something that we actually encouraged because you can't walk up on walk out onto the court in a very meek manner and then expect yeah. to beat a Serena Williams. You have to yeah. actually believe yeah, you can take her on, them. and yeah. that's the attitude I liked about her. And we encouraged in her. She would walk out onto the court as if she was a level level player, even with a Serena Williams or a Venus Williams. That's something that we actually encouraged, and it may not be understood by everyone, but you need that kind of fearlessness uh, if you're going to beat the top level. Uh, Yeah, tennis. Six one six love. She lost against Martina Hingis, and the next week she is uh, beating Martina Hingis like four six six love and six four. So it tells exactly. you about the attitude of a sports person. 
you know, you, uh, there's a very interesting thing to this. And uh, when she lost, she was playing really well in Calcutta. I was there. Yeah, there with her. absolutely. And uh, and Martina played an unbelievable game. Unbelievable and she had come with a special. Uh, she had agree. come with a plan, and that plan worked perfectly well. Exactly what she was doing was, you know, she was Coming serving down, right on the line on the yeah. on the outside line, taking out of court, so that uh, that took her, and then she was off balance, and she she wasn't able to use a forehand. Right. So, so we actually we saw that, and I remember Sanya was very upset because there was a lot of media talk, yeah. a lot of experts saying she is no match about match with uh, Marti Martina Hengis. There's no chance that she can ever match her, and that she's in a different league. And it hurt her. I know that because she came up to me and said, "Did I actually play that badly?" I said, "No, I don't think you played badly. I thought uh, Martina played amazingly well on that day, yeah. and I don't think she can repeat that performance." And as luck would have it, four or five days later, she had to play her again. Mm. And, and I hadn't gone there to Korea. I hadn't gone to see all that. And she called me up on the phone and uh, she said, I'm playing. I said, yeah, this time what we do is, you know, she's, we saw that she was serving wide on both right. sides. Mm. You give her, the, you give her the, the center and you play, you stand for the, you receive serve in the, in the tram line. Let's right. see if she can change plans there. When she yeah. did that, you know, and that our it, forehand she, was like yeah, yeah, everything was within range, and everything changed because Martina came with the with that plan. I thought, and she did not change plans, and then there was a set where Sanya beat on six love. Yeah. So that's tennis for you. Yeah, and, that's uh, for you. <laughs> As, 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 as Saurabh Ganguly, who had watched her play in, in, yeah. uh, in Kolkata, yeah, actually that. messaged her after that and said that, you know, this, yeah, uh, that's, that, that's what sport is all about. Yeah. So what different Sanya Mirza Tennis Academy is doing uh, in Hyderabad as well as in Dubai, uh, so that uh, we can tell most of the people who are going to be aspiring tennis players to join uh, uh, like that? You know, one of my biggest uh, differences in compared to any other Indian coach is that I believe in aggression tennis. Right. Now, that's something that is completely contrary to what is taught in most academies in, in India. They right. believe in, in telling the players to not make mistakes so that the other one makes a mistake and you win matches. Yeah. I don't believe in that. I don't buy that theory. I never bought it when Sanya was a junior and I always encouraged her to go for broke because I believe that at the international level, it's only aggression that wins you matches, not uh, not keeping the ball in play. And I've, I've known Sanya to have lost a lot of matches to players. Like every Tom, Dick and Harry in India of her age group would say, I've beaten Sanya. And that's true. That's a fact because at a time when she did not have the, the uh, consistency, she would lose matches to, to, to players that she should never have lost to. But once the, the, the power became, came with consistency over the years that's when there were no match for her so that's something we try and inculcate in all the students in our in our academy to not look for wins and losses early on in your career and to look for aggression and that's something that you will always find an aggression in players coming out of the Sanya Marza Chinese Academy the other things we, we've tried to do over here is you know try to encourage uh, rural talent so that uh, if we yeah. find we try and uh, try and identify uh, some rural uh, boys and girls who who have some talent and why we try to sponsor them even if they make it or not we're giving them a different kind of life and hopefully some something will come out of that at some years we also try to bring in some foreign coaches that we've had uh, we've had a trainer like robert ballard who is uh, yeah. who was uh, uh, you know an olympian and uh, we've had uh, christian Fihol, who's uh, who's worked with someone like um, mary pierce in his time Right. And we try to, and then there have been players like Kara Black has come in and hit with Sanya over here, practice in, 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 in attack academy. So I, inspiring yeah. figures. Yeah. These are inspiring figures for them. Uh, the other things that we have, that there are many things that we keep doing, trying and experimenting, you know, with all our experience. There's, we try to have a lot of tournaments. We have like about three, three AITA tournaments a, a month in our, in our academy right. to, let the, the, to give the best opportunity for our kids to play. Uh, in as many tournaments as they can so that they can and we can keep an eye on what they're doing in the tournaments because what you teach them is not necessarily what they're doing in tournaments so that helps us keep an eye on them yeah. and uh, the other thing probably the most important thing i try to do but i'm not very successful in that is to try and give parental guidance to the parents of, of the yeah. players in in uh in my academy because uh, you know i think that's the most important part you may be the most talented player in the world but if you do not have the right parental support from from your parents there's no way you're going to become a tennis player right and uh, that's like, for me extremely critical i don't think uh, everyone listens to what i say but i try to still keep on saying what I, what i feel is the right thing to do right that's our last question to you who is going to win us open all categories no, I, I, I really have. You know, I've watched enough. <laughs> I've been around tennis and sport long enough to believe that you cannot predict anything, especially in tennis, but, you can't. Uh, but we can try to guess something. Okay, <laughs> women's doubles. Who's going to win that? 
No, I, I don't want to put a finger on that. Don't worry. <laughs> I will never do it. Uh, <laughs> Because I've you. watched enough matches, enough players just coming out from out of the blue and, and winning and losing from match points up, match points down. If there's one thing I've learned from sport is that you cannot predict anything. Yeah, it's so, so much unpredictable. Thank you very, very much, sir, for giving us time. Again, it is an honor to have you. Uh, hopefully, your sure. knowledge will be passed through youngsters and they have the fearless attitude that Sanya has and as well as Anam, who is a very good uh, entrepreneur herself. Thank you very, very much, Thanks. sir.